Kim Waltz. The governor of Minnesota is the VP pick for the Kamala Harris presidential run. Actual banger pick. Good news. Uh, I glazed up Tim Waltz a little bit on my Instagram. Uh, posted one of my older videos on him and, and the Democratic farmer, labor, whatever the party in Minnesota, which I think is, is a sick ass name for a party. They're not just like the Democratic party. They got labor in the name. They got farmer in the name. You already know what it is. Posted another sick ass photo with this, this man. I'm glazing him a little bit too hard. I know I'm glazing him a little bit too hard. I know uh, if your boss looks like this, you don't need to worry about AI taking your job. He's a football coach who ice fishes and protects women's rights to choose and trans people too. Like he is, I mean, he's solid as hell. He's so solid. It freaks me out. Like it just like freaks me out that the Democrats actually went with the smart choice and not like the scared pick. They're pulling the socialists as a house on Waltz too. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Oh, hell yeah. They got nothing. They got nothing first of all he's not a socialist bro shut the fuck up he's the governor of minnesota like you can't say stuff like that these guys are so fucking brain broken oh my god everything is falling in line dude all the cards are in place virtually every single thing that's how you know they're failing big time okay if you want to know the democrats are doing so well because the republican messaging on this front have been so fucking bad they're so bad it's so bad they're talking about how he like taught in China for a year and knows how to speak Mandarin. It's like they're going to they're going to be calling him a fucking Chinese spy. They're going to say he's the Manchurian candidate and shit. You know, they're they're really just going to push away what remains of like the rest of the normal people living in the fucking Rust Belt. Yeah, he's a big Die Mountain Dew boy, too. He's a big do head. Nothing better than getting my state started with some one Minnesota Die Mountain Dew. My fucking my goat, dude. Hearing you glaze walls made me bet 50 on him at 600 plus 600. So you made me like $300. Thanks, goat. Yeah, um. I'm going to, I'm going to need a cut from all of the fucking predicted Andes in the chat who just come in here, listen to what I have to say, and then fucking make decisions off of that and go to the betting markets. Y'all are going to need to actually gift some subs back to the community. The democratic party doing actually smart moves has like broken my brain a little bit too. It's not just the Republicans that are brain bro broken. I'm brain broken as well because like, I don't ever expect this shit either. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just, I'm so used to them being dickheads that it like literally broke my brain a little bit too. We have one more major development. Vice President Kamala Harris, the presumptive Democratic nominee now for President of the United States, has selected Minnesota Governor Tim Walls to be her running mate. I asked this question to Sam Cedars and got jumped on. My question is, what has changed? Why is everyone so hyped about Waltz? How would this address our foreign policy concerns? Um, you will get jumped on because this is a moment where like people are finally tuning back into politics. And a lot of people are just like just straight up straight ticket liberals in general. And they don't personally give a single f about American foreign policy. That is by design, mind you. The American foreign policy is brutal. It's ruthless. It's bloodthirsty. It's maniacal. And that is precisely the reason why it is not in the forefront uh, of American minds. Um, foreign policy has the capacity to make or break elections only when it reaches a certain boiling point. We could technically still reach that boiling point, by the way. When people talk about like nothing ever happens, they mean like nothing ever happens to America right? They don't mean like nothing ever happens because things are happening all the time. A genocide is happening, for example. But that's the reason why uh, people will yell at you and say that you're like spoiling the fun that they're having right now. Ultimately, I always, um, I always manage my expectations. I grade on a curve when it comes to American politics. When I'm doing like election analysis, I'm not doing election analysis from simply my moral uh, perspective, even though I'm very honest about my own personal motivations and my own personal, you know, moral uh, opinions, my own morality. Um, I always, I'm almost always try to associate it with like electability so that the broader American base of support develop a better understanding. But in terms of this changing the outcome of American foreign policy, I don't think there is any sort of, so you're just sheepdogging for clout. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing. And not because I also personally think that like marginal improvements in the right direction make ease of access for labor union participation and organizing ahead of time in a country where there is no organizing in a country where if you say i want fate family leave they call you a fucking socialist and say that you have killed 100 guerrillian people this is obviously significantly better than the former option that we were locked in with most americans do not care about foreign policy and if you bring it up they're like oh fuck you you're a radical you're a piece of shit even though you're right you're not wrong right? As far as foreign policy goes, do I think Walls is going to be like all that different from the average Democrat? Probably not. Okay. But as it stands, I was a big time Bernie advocate, as you guys know. And I literally also said the same shit about fucking Bernie in terms of foreign policy. And I said this time and time again, Bernie Sanders had like a bunch of 
uh, a bunch of differences, a bunch of moments where he differentiated from the average Democrat, especially on Israel. Ultimately, it's not like he's going to be a, he, he was ever going to be like the, the true anti-war vanguardist leader that you think he was going to be. He was not. You have to grade on a curve. You have to manage your expectations. You don't have to care about American elections, but if you do care about American elections, you have to understand that, you know, uh, there's obviously... Like American elections are going to be spoken about within the confines of America. And Americans are very selfish. They don't really give a shit about our foreign policy. And it, it is not something that moves the needle. Democrats should get excited at the fact that they are, have accidentally, they've accidentally lucked into like a good situation. They just like, they've also been making a lot of comparisons to Bernie Sanders, a notoriously unpopular figure. Yeah, it's so funny. It's so awesome. And like the media instincts are also bad on this. Like they just don't can understand. They, they, man what a turnaround i know in what appears to be just a month-long sequence of w's from the democratic party just doing basic decency and competence and not like objectively trying to fucking gaslight the entirety of the country on shit that they can literally physically visibly see instead of fucking doing that they were like hey how about we act we act like a party that wants to win a fucking election what if we were to say this guy that was at the top of the ticket this this the current democratic leader is too old everyone can kind of see it maybe we should swap him out for a younger more vibrant more dynamic candidate that isn't like dying and there was resistance to it there was resistance to that and yet nancy pelosi fucking pulled through nancy pelosi unlocked ultra instinct and did the thing did the damn thing did the damn thing that i have never seen the democrats do ever honestly Okay, I've never seen the Democrats behave like a competent party. Um, they swapped out Biden right after the RNC, right after Donald Trump had been shot, cut into that media cycle immediately, put Republicans on a defensive posture. All of a sudden, we're in a situation now. People don't even associate uh, people don't even associate Kamala Harris with like all of the worst aspects of the Biden policies. Like there was two years of negative real wage growth in the fucking country, and people don't even tack that on Kamala Harris. Like. That's not even a point of contention, partially because the Republicans are fumbling the goddamn bag. They can't even have a normal fucking candidate. They can't have a normal campaign. They're having the hardest time. They're like, they're too busy going, no fair, no fair. Why did you do this to us? How dare you actually act like you want to fucking win? You're supposed to be the permanent losers in this situation. This doesn't make any fucking sense. All they've done so far is basically dispute whether Kamala Harris is a black woman, which is like a ridiculous thing. It's like dumber than fucking being a flat earther because at least the earth looks fucking flat. Kamala Harris is like, you can do a visual check to figure out if what this person is saying is correct or not. She's a black woman. Like, what the fuck do you mean she's not black? Like, what, what, are you, what are you saying? Like, that is such an insane thing to say. And like, that's what they're going on with. And, and J.D. Vance has an entire library, like a Lord of the Rings extended director's cut entire like eight hour long sequence of podcasts that he's appeared on. And he goes on there and he's talking about how like women that don't have children are sociopathic actually, and should be like forcibly bred in camps. Like what is happening? What are you guys doing, dude? What are you doing? Like you, you forgot you're suffering from your own success. You literally forgot how to run like normal campaigns. Yeah. This is like, this is the moment. This is something that it's so funny that Waltz is the pick because progressives, even fucking leftists, have been riding for the the Minnesota Democrats for quite some time. Like I myself have uh, uh, offered some coverage on that like way back in the day. As soon as there was a one person majority, like one seat majority in Minnesota, they went to town. They went on a fucking, they went nutty with it. They were like, oh yeah, no more hungry children actually. Sorry, sucks to suck. Yeah, we're gonna do paid family leave. We're gonna do all these things like no more capture uh, uh, captive meetings uh, that are obviously anti-labor. Like. All this stuff, all this stuff, they just went boom, 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 boom. They fucking put those numbers on the board. They went crazy with it. And honestly, it was great. This is why, like, for a lot of people, Waltz might be uh, out of nowhere. You know, they're like, who the fuck is this guy? He just seems like an old man. Ironically enough, he's like around the same age as Kamala Harris, even though he looks <laughs> much, much older. Um, who is this like folksy guy? No, he's been he's been doing the damn thing. I, I've said it before. Obviously, yeah, Midwestern Dems with a one seat majority are Leninist vanguardists. Like, like we've made all these jokes years ago. I've talked about how like this is exactly like the Minnesota Democratic Party is like exactly what the Democratic Party is supposed to be like. Is exactly supposed to operate like this, and and you know they're doing it. And and the Republicans literally don't know. They don't know what to do. They have no fucking. They have no way of dealing with this shit. They just have no way of dealing with it. They don't know. Waltz literally fucking 
taught high school in China. He lived in China. He's not, he, he literally has openly stated he doesn't want an adversarial relationship with China. I've been focusing on, and I lived in China, and uh, as I said, I've been there about 30 times, but uh, if someone tells you and they're an expert on China, they're probably not telling you the truth, because it's a complex country, but it's critically important for us. I don't fall into the category that China necessarily needs to be an adversarial relationship. I all these guys can cope and fucking seethe. And, and by the way, all the Republicans are coping and seething. He's a football coach. He was a teacher. He was a veteran. He literally fucking sat on, um, sat on a bunch of committees, including, I think, like the, the uh, Veteran Affairs Committee. Like he is. And also on top of that, even in all the way back in like 2007, I believe, like he literally was like way back in the day, he was already like anti-Iraq uh, war as well. But he's got he's got interesting takes. Um, progressive favor with mainstream views on Israel, Iran. Yeah. Like he's, he's definitely going to be a hawk. Um, he's definitely going to be a hawk on like Iran and Israel and shit like that, which is obvious. Like, um, you know, don't be crazy, but he's had like some unique ass takes and very interesting takes in terms of like escalating against Syria and shit like that. He's, he's an interesting guy. Like, I think that, I think that overall, uh, he is a really, really solid pick.